it's Tyler here at the uh, North Star Regional checking in to number 876 Thunder Robotics. Thunder Robotics, by the way, had a great first event, but they've done a lot of awesome improvements that we're going to be covering as well, too. Take a look at Thunder Robotics here. Uh, we're going to talk about their improvements uh, to their arm and intake area that they've done, as well as we're talking about different positional controls, some autonomous modes, and also a bit more about some future plans. Let's hear more about Thunder Robotics coming up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotic students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Freya, let's start out on your uh, robot here. I know you did a lot of modifications to your uh, intake area. So talk to me more about uh, what you had before, where you're at now, and kind of how it's working out for you so far. Uh, before we had a claw, and it moved, it moved, it just clamped the game piece. Um, but now we have an intake that it rolls uh, for cones. It picks it up and kind of locks it in place here, and then it does the same for cones. But you can never have two game pieces at once because um, when this roller is running, it would shoot out the cube, and when these two are running to pick up the cube, it'll shoot out the cone. Did you take some inspiration from like the Everybot intake or anything like that on there? Yeah, that's kind of our idea where we kind of got it, but we made modifications to it to fit what we wanted. Trevor, let's continue on your robot here. Talk to me about uh, your extension that you have. I know this is a big uh, centerpiece for your robot. So talk to me more about what's gone into it and anything we can demonstrate and showcase on it too. Um, like I was saying, it does extend using a inner tube with a sprocket like so. And the simple up-down motion is just simple pneumatics powered by a single cylinder. It's really simple. I've seen teams overcomplicate it. We thought to make it quick and easy. Looking uh, at, at this well too, so how far are you actually extending out uh, for something like this? Like, are you getting all the way to where you're able to get right on level three essentially? Right here is level two. Sure. So we're, we can score cubes and cones from basically this position. I can move it up to the third level and that gets it exactly perfect to where it needs to be. And I know we'll talk a little bit more about uh, some of the positional control, both on the programming and, and mechanical side, a little bit later as well, too. I'd like to pass it back to Freya to talk more about uh, the uh, actual, as we go through on the robot, the arm and the up-down uh, motion that we're seeing on that. Uh, I'd, I'd just love to hear, too, about stability a little bit. Like, you have a lot of weight potentially that's coming out for something like this. So when you were designing uh, this area of your robot, how did you, how did you figure out, like, hey, this uh, COG is going to work out good for us? And how or why was this the best solution for Thunder Robotics? Well, with the weight, um, we needed to find a solution to help with the weight because the intake is 10 pounds, which is a lot for the gearbox we have down there and the chain to move since there is such a big distance. So we ended up using a gas spring to help with the weight. So when the robot, when the arm goes up, that gas spring helps the weight so the motor isn't doing so much. Is that something that you, you discovered like after as you designed or was the gas shock always something part of your design? Um, after we, it was after we added the intake and realized that it was having a hard time holding itself up with just the motor. Um, we, did, we needed to find a solution to help hold it up. So it was after we had switched the intake. Trevin, is there anything else from positional control that you wanted to cover at all? And I'd love to see uh, if we can get either a corner cube in there. And I know we'll be talking about some sensors for that as well too in just a moment. Um, part of the positional control is being able to have it go up without having to just shake violently. Sure. It Before, we didn't have an, any weight out there, and it would just go wild. It was crazy. Every time you'd want to score, you'd have to wait for five seconds for it to calm down. 
but now that we have a little more weight on it, it still shakes, but it's a lot more stable than it was. Is that how it was in your first event, or was that like before your first event you discovered that? And while building it, we didn't like understand that it would shake like that, but then we got to building it, and after we started driving it, we noticed I was just shaking a lot, and there's nothing you could really do to counteract that. Sure. Well, there's a lot that goes into this uh, from uh, outside the mechanical perspective of your robot as well, too, so break down uh, how some of the structure works out from both the programming sensor side of thing, and then if we can demonstrate a little bit more about uh, how you're actually intaking as well, too, that'd be great. Yeah, so from the actual extending and moving the arm side of it, if you want to move it down to an intake position. So you could see on that it pulled the arm back first yeah. and then moved it down. That is one of the checks that we're doing. So on the actual encoders of the motors, they know where they are after they start. So we know we can't extend in at a certain point and we can't move the arm at a certain point to make sure that the arm doesn't say extend into the robot which has happened multiple times during okay. testing. So we put a lot of work into doing some safety checks to make sure this will get to here without getting in the robots or getting in the way of anything else. Um, from your, from your position wise, when you're, when you're determining that, did you use any sort of like uh, simulator or anything like that to like kind of figure out where you wanted to go or were you just doing it from a hard code side? So uh, our actually way to get the positions that we have is we just have a manual movement sure. on the robot. So if you need to, for example, we can just move it manually out of the way. And that's how we got our positions, is we just did something like this. So we would find this, test it a little bit, make sure the position works for what we need it to do, and then put it in the code. And then use our safety checks and it gets it there. Yeah. Let's start to wrap up on this robot. Aba, talk to me more about uh, what's going into your autonomous modes. And then any uh, future plans as you look at, uh, hopefully, world championships and beyond as well, too. Yeah, so we have a lot of features that we plan on adding when we go to Worlds, if we go to Worlds, which I think we will. Um, one, of the, one of those features is definitely our cameras. We always like to incorporate a lot of vision into our code, and this robot is no different. Um, we wanted to add it on before we came here, but we ended up not having time. But we wanted to be able to target the um, April takes and use that to position the arm itself. So. We wanted to use the April takes like much like uh, in past years where you would uh, calculate the distance by the limelight. So then we would tell the arm the position it needs to be. So in theory, we could be anywhere near that post and then it will tell the robot what distance to go arm length and positional wise as the, of the robot. Um, we actually have two limelights on this robot. There is one here and there is one here. This one is our targeting. Uh, camera it is used to look at the uh, any targets we might have like well, uh, uh, reflective tape or April takes stuff like that and this camera is our um, game piece camera so, so it's like an object detection that you're yeah, doing with yeah. that sure so it will detect if we have an object what object we have so then that can tell what object we can have back to the uh, lights um, it can also tell us how far we need to extend the arm based on the position of it so these two cameras will be talking back and forth eventually. Can we see a game piece go in? And I'd love to see just how that, how those lights change basically get that, mm -hmm. so you get that driver feedback. So now again, the yellow on the driver mm -hmm. feedback for them too, I see. Mm -hmm. Cool. And are you, from the, from the feedback that you're getting on there, is that specifically changing just when you uh, intake or do you do any communications with like your human players or anything like that? Um, so our main communication literally is <laughs> this light. Yeah. Um, when they're barreling down, they'll switch it's either purple or yellow depending on what piece they want to pick up. Sure. Most of the time we like to pick up cones because um, they're a little bit faster for us to pick up, but sometimes you're in the position where you want to complete a link and you're going to get more points that way, so we'll say switch to purple on our way there, and then our human player will see that and then put one up there for us. Well, 876 Thunder Robotics, thank you so much for telling us more about your robot. Cool to hear about uh, the iterations going through. I hope it pays good dividends here at the North Star Regional, so we wish you best of luck here and hopefully see you at the World Championships as well, too. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotics students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu first to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative.
FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.